Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Beta Man Studios. I'm here to show you the character controller that is a part of the Sample Assets Beta for Unity 4.6. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take Forge Networking, we're going to drop it in, which I've already done, and we're going to see the character moving around inside of the scene across the network or across two instances of Unity. So just go ahead, if you're going to want to follow along, go ahead and download this asset, import it. I would suggest importing it into a new project because it is an entire project apparently and it will overwrite settings. So import this into a completely new project and we'll get started. So I have it already imported here and I already have uh, Forge dropped in so I don't, we don't have to wait around for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the canvas and down here you're probably going to see a different scene name for the this uh, menu is going to load and I probably should tell you what the menu scene is uh, if you search for menu you'll find forge quick start menu if you double click that it'll open up a scene that looks like this and when you select the canvas you can scroll down to the start game script and down here you'll see scene name and it's probably going to be a different name so uh, set it to game as a capital G, a lowercase a m e, and that's how we're going to be setting up this project. So I'm going to start up a new scene, Control N, and I'm going to clear out some build settings so I get to show you guys that from scratch. So here inside of the new scene, I'm going to drop in a cube because that is probably the most important thing: is to have a floor that our character could stand on. One and fifty. I'm going to drop in a light because why not? And shadows just because I can. So now that I have this scene set up, it's nice and bright, I can see. I'm going to bring in the character controller. So I'm going to go to sample assets. I'm going to go to characters, third person character, and I'm going to go to prefabs. Inside of here, you'll find two controllers. We're going to grab the one that says uh, third person character dot prefab. We're going to drag that into the scene. I'm just going to put it in front of the camera and we're gonna to begin to network this guy so if you have him selected you'll notice that he has two scripts on him that are his main uh, modes of movement the first one is third person character and the second one is third person user controller I've already done the discovery for what we need to do in here so we're gonna to go to the third person user controller I'm gonna open that up and here it is uh, this is straight this is somebody else's code and we're just gonna modify it to work across the network so I'm going to be using beardedmanstudios.network and instead of this deriving from mono behavior, I'm now going to derive from networked mono behavior. This is our version of the mono behavior. When you derive from the networked mono behavior, there are two things, or there's one thing really that you have to do whenever you uh, come in to a new script that you're editing and uh, when you derive from network mono behavior. The first thing that you're going to do is look for awake, the second, the start, and the third, the update. Those are the three functions that you need to override. Uh, so you're just looking for those three functions to override. So the first thing I see is a start. So I'm going to do protected, override, void start, and drop in a base dot start. So we call the base method. I'm going to scroll down. Here's an update. So I'm going to do protected, override, void update, and do a base dot update in there. If I scroll through the script, I do not see an awake anywhere. So we're good. We've already, we've covered uh, the conversion. Now we're going to make it so that the character can serialize across the network. So if we scan through this document, we'll find that down at the bottom there's a function character.move and it passes in four arguments. Those four arguments are going to be the main arguments that we're going to be sending across the network uh, in order to animate this guy across the network. So rather than serializing large animation files, we work smarter, not harder, and that is that we just send the variables that control those animations. With MechNM, variables drive what animations play, so if we send and serialize those variables, we're essentially serializing the entire animation, and that saves us a ton of bandwidth. Uh, so what we're going to do at the uh, and the conversion process is we're going to look at these five, these uh, four variables here and we're going to send them across the entire in their entirety to, across the network so if we come up here to the top we're going to say protected override void awake and inside of here we're going to say add networked variable we're going to drop in our getter and our setter so the getter the first getter we're going to do is going to be move and the second getter uh, that we're going to do is look pause and then crouch and then jump. So for the setter of the move, we're going to say x rocket move equals vector 3 x. 
Now, if you're new to lambdas, it's basically a lambda is a small function. It's a quick inline function. Uh, if we look at it here, we're saying get uh, returns move. And here we're saying move is equal to x, where x is the variable in question. So if you have no idea what I just said, uh, just know that until you learn lambdas, this is easily uh, usable by copy and paste uh, or following the same standard for all your variables. So if I wanted to do the next one, which is look pause, I'm going to put it there and then I'm going to put look pause here. And I'm going to check out what data type look pause is and I can see it's vector 3. And let me double check move. Move is also vector 3. So I'm going to leave these as casted vector 3s. The next thing I want to do is really I want to crouch. However, if I look down here inside of the fixed update, I notice that crouch is a variable in the scope of this function. And I can't have that. I need to access it from the awake. So I'm going to upgrade this variable to be an instance variable by deleting bool from there, coming to the top, and typing in private bool crouch up there. Now this variable is ready to be networked. I'm going to pass crouch here. Copy and paste over this. And the data type is bool. So we're going to type bool there. The last one we're going to do is the jump. So jump is already uh, relative to this class. So we're going to drop it in there. And if we select jump, we can notice that it's a bool as well. So we're going to cast x as a bool to be assigned to jump. The very last thing that we're going to do is if we come down to the fixed update, we want to say if is owner, or if we, we want to say if not is owner. So only the owner is going to be able to move this character. If it is not the owner, we're simply going to update it. So I'm going to come down here to the function that controls the movement, which is this one, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it up here. I'm going to return out of this because I want to hit this return line if I am not the owner of this object because I don't want to run any of this logic. All this logic should run on whoever is controlling the player, and whoever is not the player should update. So in this case, uh, the server will move the character around and the client will just update it. With this, we're completely done. If we jump back over here, we can save our scene out and we're going to save it as game because that's what we named it inside of the menu. So if we go back to the menu and select the canvas, scroll down to start game, that is why we called this game here. And then we're going to open up our build settings. We're going to drag in the menu, uh, the, let me get rid of this, we're going to drag in the menu first and second we're going to drag in the game. With this we are ready to check out the networking so I'm going to build and run. I'm going to overwrite this instance of game. And once this is built you'll see that I just move it on the server, those values transfer and all the animations play. So I'm going to press play here. Put it over here on this side of the screen. I'm going to go into the editor. I'm going to snap the editor to the left hand side, expand it out a little bit. I'm going to make the editor the server and this window the client. So I'm going to start server here. And over here on this side, I'm going to start client. Now I can select in the editor and I can just start moving the character. And you'll notice that the animations are transferred to the client. I can jump and I can also crouch and I can crouch walk. So you can see that by sending those variables across the network, we have the entire character uh, completely networked with very little effort. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later.